So we're going to record today. Welcome. This is the 11 o'clock level two class. And yes, Robert, you wanted us to record. We're going to record. So everybody, be careful what you say. <laughs> no, no worries. Here we are on page 28 of the Black Lowry Songbook, and we're doing Down in the Valley. As you know, every week we go from the beginning of the book, and we do something with all red, blue, and green. And then the following week, we will go to the back part of the book and pick a song where we have no colors and we're learning all of the new chords. So we're pushing ourselves to learn the chords. But what I love is that we can always go back every other week to the beginning of the book so that you can get that left hand solid. That is the key to easy play music is getting your left hand absolutely automatic like you were a typist. You know, remember back in the day when you started typing and it was get your hand in position and after a while you have to look, you had to look at it and then after a while you didn't have to look at it, you could look at your book and just type and your fingers just knew where to go. This is what we want to have happen with the left hand is we want to make sure that our left hand knows exactly where it's going. So eventually we won't have to look at this hand. Eventually. All right. Now, if you're just getting started, you will have to look and that's okay. If you need to put your bumpers in, go ahead and do that. You will never have to place your hand outside of these two three by fives that you just stick in there. You never are going to go below the Red Sea. Now, those of you that come to my advanced classes, you know good darn and well that we do sometimes do that. But <laughs> for all intents and purposes, if we're just doing easy play music, we don't need to ever go outside of this little box. C on the bottom, B on the top. Your fingers will always be in the same position. That's called your home base position. Pinky goes on the red C. Your ring finger goes on the D. Third finger goes on the E. Second finger or pointer goes on the blue F. And your green thumb or number one goes on the green G. If you push these two fingers right here, your third and your second, up in between these black keys just a little bit, you now have a wonderful hand position and those keys act as bumpers so that your hand does not roam around. If you're too far down on the tips of the keys, first of all, it's hard for your thumb to reach anything. Second of all, it's too easy to roam around and you don't want to have to do that. You want to make sure that you're in a good solid position. Whoop, here comes Mr. Purcell. Let's let him in. If you need an E chord, your third finger's on it. If you need a D chord, your ring finger is on it. If you need an A chord, your thumb can just reach up one note to A. And if you need a B, it is also your thumb reaching up to the B. Don't ever go backwards with your pinky. Don't do it. Keep your hand here and you can feel all of the chords that you will need. And that's the whole idea. This is the true secret to learning easy play music. And I don't want anybody to go home and say, today I'm going to learn all my minor chords. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> Even though I do have a chord chart for those of you that might want it. Some of you already have it. And it tells you which notes for the chord, the order of the keys, and which fingers to put on them. So you can write them in if you ever find something in your music that you're unsure about. Refer to the chord chart and just write it in. Cheating is 100% okay. But what I don't want you to do is study the sheet and say, okay, I need to know all my minor chords by tomorrow. Learn them as they show up in your music. That's the best way because it's important not just the chord itself, but what chord comes before it and what chord comes after it so that your fingers can make some very smooth transitions and go from chord to chord easily. Just like when you were typing, you needed to know where all the letters were, but after a while you even knew where the words were without even having to look. And that's the same thing we're going to do with the left hand. Now, that's not true with the right hand. 
you're not always going to be in C, D, E, F, and G position. So don't assign notes to these fingers because sometimes your fingers are going to be here, sometimes they're going to start here, sometimes you're going to have to bounce around in the song, sometimes your fingers are going to have to stretch to reach the notes as you will see in Down in the Valley. We have to stretch our fingers. Fingering is important. Now, it's not the law. My fingering is not the law, but it's a good suggestion. It's a great place to get started. So as far as right hand fingering, I'm going to tell it to you and I want you to write it in in pencil. That way if your fingers stretch a little differently or want to do something differently, it's okay. You might want to erase mine and put your own in as long as you are going finger by finger making good music. What don't you want to do? You do not want to run out of fingers and go one, two, three, four, five, pinky, pinky, poke, poke, poke. Or on the other side, if you're coming downhill, you don't want to run out of fingers and go thumb, thumb, poke, poke, poke. Mm -mm. Every note gets its own finger so that you make beautiful, smooth music. If you have to tip over your hand, you're doing something wrong. So you have to go back and refigure so that if you're going uphill, you might have to do a little thumb tuck. And we do not have any thumb tucks in this song, so we'll talk about that on a different day. We've talked about it before. And if you're coming downhill and you run out of fingers, don't just poke, poke. You're going to have to do a crossover in order to reach all your notes. Any questions so far? All right, let's do some fingering. Get your pencils out. G1, C3, that's already a stretch. D4, E5, C3. Second line, E5, D4, C3, D4. Third line, G1, B2. D can either be 3 or 4, whichever one it's easier to get to. The high F is a 5, and then your D again is either 3 or 4, whichever one is the easiest to reach. Last line is B2. C3, D4, C3. Top of the next page, G1, C3, D4, E5, C3. E5, D4, C3, D4. And the third line, G1, B2, D is either 3 or 4, whichever one fits the best, high F, 5, and D again is either 3 or 4, whichever you did in the first part of the, of the line. B2, C3, D4, and C3. Now, do you notice anything about page 1 versus page 2? What do you notice? They're both exactly the same. Page one, when you get to page two, it's an exact repeat. So if you take the song apart in little sections, line at a time is going to be an easy way to learn this. Once you learn page one, you already have page two all done. The only difference is the chording at the end of the song. Let's talk a little bit about note values. First of all, you have... This is 3 over 4 time. It tells you 3 over 4. What does that mean? That means that there are 3 beats to a measure. A measure is everything between these up and down lines. These are called bar lines, not belly up to the bar, but bar lines because it divides your staff. The staff is 5 lines and 4 spaces. That's what this treble clef means. The G treble clef, this curly curly signature here. That means that each one of these lines and spaces has its own name. You don't have to memorize any of it because the note is written right inside. It's printed right inside. But the notes are on the correct line or space. Every time you have a note on that second line, it's going to be a G. Every time you have a note on that third space, it's a C, always. But what's nice is you can learn these without having to memorize them. The notes are already written in. 
The bottom number on 3 over 4 is written like a fraction, 3 quarters. What that tells me is that the quarter note gets one of those beats. Well, what's the quarter note? The black one with a stem. All right, you have different note values here. Here you have a dotted half note. It is the only note in the measure, so we're going to assume, and I know we should never assume anything, that it's going to get all three of the counts. Here you have another dotted half note, and then you have a tie. The tie is that line that arcs across and connects these two notes to another dotted half note. And if you notice, they did not even print the letter right inside of it. That's to remind you, your finger is still on it. You are holding that note with your right hand for the count of both or for a count of six. In line two, you're actually going to hold for nine counts. One thing I want you to not worry about is the counting. I will do the counting, and this guy will do the counting, so you don't have to. I want you guys to play the song the way you know it and let the rhythm or the music style be the radio, and you're going to play like you're playing along with the radio. Now, you can't do that when we're in class because when you're in class and we all play together, the only thing I want you to put on is the easy button. All right, the easy button allows you to play single-fingered, single-fingered chords. Just touch and release. Pretend like there's a little golf ball in the palm of your hand, so you're nice and loose, but you're super glued to those keys. C, D, E, F, G. Remember, your left hand always has a hand position always in the same position every time. We're going to learn a fourth chord today. It is a no chord, and it's the very first thing you see at the beginning. A no chord is N dot, C dot, and it's any three consecutive notes in a row. You can't just play three white ones. That won't do it. But it's either two blacks and a white, or two whites and a black, or these two whites and a black, for these two whites and a black, any three consecutive keys will stop the chord. That's called a no chord. Here we have it at the beginning of the song. There will be some cases when you want to use that as a chord itself in the middle of a song. <coughs> so what you need to do is figure out which three notes are going to be the easiest for you to play so you can do it that way every time. Once again, don't give your left hand a choice and your fingers will thank you. What do I mean by that? Well, it's always going to be pinky on red C, always pointer on blue F. So a no chord, I like to do my thumb on the crack of the F and the G, and my pointer on the F sharp. That way my hand doesn't have to move, and the no chord just happens without thinking. I don't have to stop and go, which three do I want to play? Or I don't have to bring down a second hand. I just use two fingers, and there it is. If it's easier for you to do three fingers and do these middle three, that's fine too. But just be consistent so that every time you see a note chord, it's going to be the same fingers every time. I think of it like the white crayon in your crayon box when you were kids and you had all these beautiful colors. I loved opening up my crayon box. But I never could figure out what that white crayon was for because your paper was white. White's the absence of color. Well, the no chord is just like that white Crayola crayon. It is the absence of sound. It turns your chord off. And what it does is create dramatic white space in between parts of your music or sometimes at the beginning of your music. If you have on a rhythm, and in this case, it is going to be a waltz, and you choose a chord, now it's going to count to three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now, how do I know it's counting to three? Let your organ do the talking for you. The lights are going to blink. Red, green, green. Red, green, green. So if you're not sure of your beat, you can check. Now I do a no chord, but the drums 
still go. So it will always keep your beat for you. So a no chord while your music style is going, your drums will still go. We're not going to practice on the three quarter guitarist because it's a hard, it's very smooth. It's a little bit harder to hear where the, where the beats are. So we're going to switch it to a full band. And I'm on an easy four today. Hear how much more distinctive it is? One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. But any rhythm that counts to three, and you have three of them, the full band, the pianist, and the guitarist on the easy four, you cannot use the 4-4 four, four rhythms, which are all the rest of them, so you have fewer choices for down in the valley. The tempo that came up was 85. What does 85 mean? Well, it means if I were to count on my watch, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, etc., etc., it would count to 85 over the space of 60 seconds or one minute. So it's 85 beats per minute. The slower the tempo, the lower the number. So you've got tempo, you've got tempo um, faders, buttons here that have a uh, down arrow and an up arrow. If I push down, it's going to go slower. And you always want to practice at a slower tempo. If I press the up button, it's going to go super fast. don't want to play this super fast. How do we know what speed to play our song at? Well, the easiest thing is to go into this button right here that says Song Setup. If I touch this, I can now scroll and everything's in alphabetical order until I get to down in the valley in my window. Now I touch Select. Song's not going to play for me. I have to play it. But what happens is all the lights changed, and it set me up with a tempo. It actually set me up with 90. Yep. It set me up with three-quarter guitarist. It set me up with a sound here. And it set me up with a sound here. So you're always going to get the two sounds with your song set up. I'm going to play it for you first so that you can listen to it. Watch my fingers if you need to know where the fingers are going. If you want to already play along, please feel free to do that as well. But when we start playing together, you're going to be on easy only, and we're going to slow it down, and we're going to put it on that other waltz so that it, you can hear it better. This is the smooth waltz. There's the intro. song for you or you can just hit stop if you're just in the middle of practicing okay well this is fairly easy song so I think we're gonna go through this one very very nicely very quickly um, if you are just getting started you've noticed that we put together three things the harmony which is your chords your left hand the melody which is the part you sing and your right hand is considered your singing hand and your rhythm, the beat, the band. That is the third element of your playing. 
Now, when you first sit down to practice, usually you're going to practice with one element at a time, and everybody is going to just naturally say right hand, because that's the melody. That's the most fun to practice. And then the second thing people do is throw in the chords. I only got one problem with that. There's nothing holding you accountable for your timing. So what I want you to do when you practice, once you get that right hand down and it feels comfortable, I want you to put two elements together at a time, and it's not one hand and one hand. It's going to be the rhythm and the right hand, or the rhythm and the left hand. Try it. See if it doesn't make a difference in your timing. So what are we going to do? We're going to put it on waltz. I'm going to use full band, and I'm going to slow it down so that my fingers can catch up. Let's slow it down to about 78. Now, if I'm just doing chords, I can sing the melody. What I don't want you to do is count. I don't want you to be boring and go, one, two, three, C, two, three, one, two, three, green, two, three, one, two, no, C, two, three. Don't just count because it doesn't make any musical sense. I want you to sing the song. Instead of playing the right hand, sing the song. And you can sing it in your head if you want. And that way, you will hear the chord. And you will hear the changing of the chord because you're singing the melody in your head. When it's time to practice the right hand, I want you to do the no chord so your drummer goes. And now you'll be able to have a beat. Can you hear it? One, two, three. And so you just practice. But you don't have to worry about your chords. You don't have to worry about your chords. It's just the beat and your right hand. Then when you're ready, you can put all three elements together, and now it should be easier. And do it line at a time. It's going. Yep. Now, they were going to stop at, um, they were going to stop in between. They're on their way home, but they were going to stop at, at Home Depot and get some stuff. So they're probably not home yet. Oh. I told them you'd call them right before you left or right before you got there. Right, you're good. You're good. Yep. Okay. I'm talking to Eric. He's our, our favorite Eric. <laughs> he just got back from doing another delivery. Do you, do you have that piano too or no? He's already left. <laughs> All righty. Very cool. All right. Put your instrument on easy only. I want you to use your waltzes when class is over, when I'm not here. Now in class, we're going to use my waltz. We're going to use my waltz. And I will play all three elements. You get to choose one. And no, it can't be the rhythm. You've got to choose a hand, the melody, or a hand, the harmony, the chords. Choose one hand and play each one separately. If you can do both, don't let me hold you back. Do both. This is an easy song to get the two hands together. I'm going to count John, to what three. what tempo are you at? Pardon? What tempo are you at? Right now I'm at 78. Okay. It's very slow. Yeah. Now, the hardest part about playing slow is holding the ties. That's the hardest part. Now, if you're at home and you don't hold them long enough, the organ police are not going to knock on your door and yell at you. It doesn't matter. You do it the way you want to do it when you're at home. But here, I will do the counting so that you don't have to. But just watch the holds. Watch your ties. One, two, three. Hold, two, three. One, two, three. Hold, two, three. Hold again, two, three. Hold, two, three. 
song. For those of you that have been playing along with me for several months now, this one should be something that you've got under your fingers and it sounds good and it's one that you can play for your friends. Why? Because you always want to play the easy ones. They don't know. Your friends don't know if it's easy or hard. Play the easy ones. If you play the hard one and make a mistake, they go, ah, you're not very good. But if you play the easy ones and it sounds fabulous, they think you're a fabulous player. And you are. <laughs> All right, let's try it one more time. One more time. Choose a hand, left hand, right hand. If you can do them both, go for it. And then we're going to review what we did last week. Oh, boy. Let me count. One, two, three. about down in the valley. Nope. Nope. This is a nice one. This is just a really pretty nice song to play. All right, do you remember what we did last week? The beer barrel polka, page 54. And there are several pages. But if you just play the first part of the song, you are 100% successful. Now what happens here, they tick the colors away, but your first page is still red C, green G. Red C, and if you want to put the colors in, you know what to do. Just grab your colored pencils and make the, make the right color. So you've got it, green G, red C, green G, red C, green G. And then when we turn the page, we have an F, we have a C, and we don't have anything weird until we get to the last page. We have a B flat. B flat means you're just going to move your thumb up to the B flat. Remember flats and sharps. Flats are the first black key down the keyboard to the left. You have a G minor. Minors are the letter of the chord plus three keys up the keyboard. So it's a G plus one, two, three. G and B flat. All right. Let me put something different on here. And I'm going to turn this microphone off for just a second. I have to give Eric some instructions. Okay, I'm back. Oh, here comes Nona. Now, what is the most confusing part of beer barrel polka? We had several sharps. The sharps were the hashtags. We had several flats. The sharps are the hashtags. They're always going to be in front of the note. And a sharp sends you up the keyboard to the right. Up the keyboard. So it's the first black key up the keyboard from the letter. So an F sharp is always going to be this first one right here. All right. How about the road map? Pretty stinky, huh? Yeah, that was a stinky road map because you had two, I think the second page. Yeah, we had two first and second endings. 
with two sets of repeat dots. Now remember the rules. You're always going to go, but if you have a set of repeat dots, you want to back up until you find the immediate set of repeat dots going backwards. If there aren't any, you go, oh, go back to the beginning. But in this case, there are some. If you take all of page 54, all of page 55, there's your repeat dots in line two facing forward. Your first ending is at the top of page 56. There's your repeat dots facing backwards. If you use highlighters, your eyes will follow the colors faster than if you're just looking for your dots. So you're going to make those dots a color and then the dots that face forward, make them the same color so that you don't have to worry. Your eyes go from color to color. The second time you play it, you skip the first ending, play the second ending. Oops, there's more dots. They're facing forward, so right now you just keep playing. All of page 56. Page 57, you have two more sets of first and second endings. There you have repeat dots facing backwards. Put a color on it. Now what are we looking for? The immediate set, not the set of dots that's back here. You go back to the immediate dots. So you always stay in between each pair of dots as they show up. It can be confusing, but that's why we use colors. That way you don't ever have to worry. The blue goes back to blue every time. And then the sec and second time you play it, it's you take the second ending. So use your colors to help you. We're going to try the bare barrel polka. <laughs> what else is hard about this? It's a little faster, isn't it? We're not going to play it super fast. As a matter of fact, I'm going to keep it on country because that's an easy beat to hear. And we're going to take it kind of slow. All right, it's going to sound like this. That's how it's going to play. I'm going to even slow it down even a little bit more than that. All right, so we're going to take it nice and slow. You have eighth notes at the beginning. Those are the two notes with stems and connected with a flag. Two eighth notes equals one quarter note, one beat. So they go a little faster. Again, don't worry about the counting. Play it the way you know it, and you will be right. Always play it the way it sounds, and you will be right. Oh, that's not going to work. OK. We also have an incomplete measure at the beginning. This one says 4 over 4, so every measure has to add up to 4. And guess what? The first measure does not. It adds up to 1. There's two notes, but it's two eighth notes, so it adds up to 1. But you can't start it on the first beat, because then you'd be missing the other three. So you have to start it on the fourth beat. So when I count, it'll be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, there's a. Play it the way it sounds, and you will be correct. All right, let's give it a try. We're going to try going all the way through. So watch your dots. If you can only do one hand, just do one hand. Take it nice and slow. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. Rest. Rest. Rest.
Juan. Did you get lost? Yeah. Yes, that's okay. <laughs> this is an easy one to get lost on. So do not worry. If you yeah. learned one thing last week about this song, about how to go from dot to dot or first and second ending, or how to play the G minor chord or how to play that B flat chord, if you just learned one thing, you are 100% successful. Next week, we will do... Can't help falling in love on page 58 if you want to take a look at it. 
Yeah, Pretty Song. This is a great book. I love teaching out of this book because there's some fabulous songs. And it pushes you a little bit further every time. So that's a, that's a wonderful thing. Okay, do not forget, this Thursday we are kicking off our Zoom uh, anniversary spectaculars and the Villages gets the first day. It will be in store and online. So one o'clock is the first concert. 215 is the workshop and yes it's going to be presets but no i'm not excluding people with smaller organs i am going to make the song simple enough that where i tell you this is going to be a2 you you mark okay this is a2 but this is what i'm going to do i'm going to push my duet button or whatever it is that i'm going to tell you to push so it's going to be one button pushes super simple those people that have presets i'm going to go through that process with them so that you can get that as well. So this will work for everybody, everybody. Yep. The song is going to be Cherish. I will have Robert put the song on in the morning so that if you don't have it, it is in the 60s book. It's probably in several other books as well. Um, then uh, if you don't have it, you can download it. So it's gonna be easy stuff, but it's also going to be important stuff for those people that have been asking about how do I memorize and save these presets? <laughs> yeah, yep. But don't worry, if you don't have presets, it'll still be fun for you as well. All right, and then at 3.30, I do another concert. Woo-hoo! So <laughs> if there's anything you have to hear, do not be afraid to email me and say, can you play blah, blah, blah song for me because I haven't heard it in a long time. I'll be more than happy to pull it out because I have not completed my set lists yet. So that would be, that would be fine. I will, I will accommodate as many people as I can. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Keep watching your emails because there will be five Zoom spectaculars for our Zoom anniversary. I just happen to have the first one. And um, they're all going to be fabulous. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Another great day of lessons. Thank you. You are very welcome. You're very welcome. Thank you so much for coming. Can't do it without you. <laughs> you guys Bye. are the best. Go to the beach or go play your organ. Pick one. <laughs>